it's Naomi here and welcome to the firecracker department after show this is where we talk about past episodes from our podcast and we pull together some of the core members to tell us what kind of resonated for them from that discussion and this is our very first I'm very excited to start including some of the community members from the firecracker department we've got Alyssa Abler here this is so exciting Alyssa Alyssa joins us a lot for our brunches but she's also a beautiful musician and has written some songs inspired from our podcast with her group called the daily fair thank you for being here Alyssa. thanks for having me and then our tried and true i am so happy to see emily and aj emily is in charge of our wellness department she's all over in la and then we've got aj who's sometimes in la sometimes in toronto and she's in tar- charge of content creation and brand kit and this is a pleasure to see your faces because we are going to talk about Oh, I'm excited about this one. Michelle Buteau, who I adore. You'll know Michelle from things like Work It, which uh, was on Netflix just recently, got launched. And then, of course, The Circle and Always Be My Maybe. And she's got a Netflix special that's coming out in September called Bootopia. And she's got a podcast called uh, Adulting. And she's got the two cutest twins you'll ever see. She's just everything. Um, I really loved my chat. Tell me. What resonated for you? Emily, let's chat with you. Oh, my thing was, you, you can be funny without being a dick. I wrote it down, and I was like, <laughs> yes, you can. You can be funny without making fun of people. <laughs> so that was, that was great. Crosses. I love her style of comedy so much because she walks this line of cheekiness but intelligence. You notice that? Like, she's like, she puts people in their place, but in such an intelligent and cheeky way I love it but also uh, AJ, a way that like, you? like the thing about her comedy though is that you remember it because it's so it just feels so authentic like there's nothing put on about it and like I love when she was talking about you know she can't make rape jokes she won't do it but mm-hmm. she'll talk about how she doesn't want to see your crusty dick oh, I was like that's that's hysterical and then yeah. she was like and, yeah. and then of course that's what people remembered about that and she was getting messages about people saying that they use that to defend themselves on the street. And she's like, you don't know you've said something and you spend your life wishing that you could say something to the world. And that's what I'm remembered for. <laughs> Double funny. Oh, yeah. But like, it's so true. Like she was talking about how, you know, you go into the world as artists, we want to affect people, but you almost, you don't really know what that's going to look like or like what it is you're supposed to say with your art. And then all of a sudden, you've said it and other people attach themselves to it. And it's so such a beautifully organic, organic thing. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. Alyssa. Oh, I was going to say, I think I saw some, some clip of that. Uh, is it an act? Do you call it an act? I think I, I saw a clip of that. And then I realized that's who you're talking to. I was like, no way. <laughs> that's rad. <laughs> like there's my dog. Um, but yeah, I was just, she her she like you can hear the color bleed through the speakers when she's speaking it's just mm-hmm. so fascinating how much energy is just generated she's the fairy fairy godmother with back fat mm-hmm. I, I literally mean, i just want you to know i have a whole i couldn't tell i was like oh my god that gold all of it a lot of gold yeah, yeah. Of gold. She has, i mean like, i would sit watch her like, live her life and be happy me too butoisms you know what I mean? Like she has these, oh. these things that she says and she just, I just, I mean, when I, I met her on the set from Work It and as soon as I met her, I'm like, oh, you're fantastic. You're my people. She's so inclusive. Um, although when we talked in the, in the, um, on the podcast, she was like, you know, I'm cilantro. Did you hear that? When she was yes. talking about cilantro, I'm not for anybody. But I'm like, <laughs> I can't imagine anybody who wouldn't love a little Michelle Buteau. I think she's just killer. It's just Emily, so what about natural. you? Anything else? Oh, no. um, oh yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. I think, I, well, and I think her being so natural comes from her, fi- not finally, but I know I've had to reach this too of where you're like, I'm going to say it, fuck it. Uh, I'm who I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? Instead of trying, because I've been told also, you know, how she, I think she said it like twice, how people are like, you're too big to be on camera. Yes, all the time from when I was in college. And I used to be pretty skinny. Now I'm like, what else? 
Um, love you, love and light. Um, but big people are worthy of love. When she, I, I wrote that down. I'm like, yes, girl. Like everybody's worthy of love. Like what? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, I got excited about that. <laughs> but the fact that that's something that is um, like isn't just common. Like of course everybody's worthy of love. Who 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 was the person that went? Mm, you're more lovable than you. Who who was that person? I would like to have a stern talking to them. Exactly. A scared person. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. But in, in that vein, she talked about like growing out of criticism. And when you get to the point of realizing that like you are vulnerable in an audition as much as the executives are vulnerable because they have to find someone to fill the role and they don't want to fuck up because there's money on the line. She says, once you realize that, you know, I, I mean, everybody's just, we're all just sacks of flesh banging into each other. That's what I say. <laughs> Hot. We're just all uncomfortable. Sacks of meat. Trying to trying to love themselves. <laughs> You're really selling humanity to me right now. You're welcome. <laughs> I've been writing a book about it. Yeah, girl, get it. Oh, it does. It actually feels for me when when in speaking with Michelle, but also like when I see her in interviews, that she really like nothing is forbidden topics. Like she'll take on anything. She's not scared of anything. I'm sure she has fears, but she's not scared of anything coming your way. And also I love watching, like if you see any of her interviews online, she unnerves her interviewers so much because she's so ballsy and she just comes out with these like blatant confident statements and they're all like, Boy, I wasn't ready for this, <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> yeah. She still likes your questions though. Yeah. I have yeah, yet to hear a, right. I have yet to hear someone you that you speak to who doesn't say that's a great question. Oh yeah, that's true. And Everybody that's one of my we, we I wait that. every episode listening to this. I'm like, when are they gonna say it? When are they gonna say that's a great no, question? No, no, we edit. Sometimes they're like, that's a stupid question. Cut. Cut. <laughs> yeah. Cut. Oh, All right. Right. You know, you're allowed, I guess. But no, but for real. Like it <laughs> there is you could tell that she was just so into everything you guys were talking mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got greedy. I, don't, I got greedy because at one point, I think her kids started being like, mom, mom. And I was like, oh, I want, I, like, I mean, I could have talked to her forever. And those children need their mother. That's not fair. <laughs> yeah, right. That'd Any final fine. thoughts from you folks? When she was talking about the conversation she had with her dad about overtime mm. and not being thanked for that, um, and the whole like do it because you want to do the work not because you want to thank you i think that's summarizes i think why the arts exist a bit like oh yeah if you if you need a thank you you're probably in the wrong profession Mm -hmm. like it should just be pouring out of you well we all all of us grew up with someone that yeah. became an artist because or wanted to be in the arts because they'd like the attention and, and they don't last mm-hmm. because the mm-hmm. first thing you learn about being an artist is that nobody pays attention or gives a fuck mm-hmm. right away <laughs> or if they do they're definitely gonna, not going to pay you right <laughs> yeah <laughs> what is this money and now it's Nothing. worse because it's all online and it's mm-hmm. like in social media like your likes why didn't anybody like that piece of art that i put out yeah yeah Goodness. Any final thoughts from you, Churchill? Oh, yeah. The way you present yourself is how you feel about yourself. When she was talking about how they get dressed up to go to the kitchen, I was like, oh, I want to do that. <laughs> That's great. Did you immediately look at what you were wearing? Because I did. <laughs> like, how, does, how do I feel about myself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I mean, I did think about that, but I think mostly I feel like comfortable. I don't, I don't dress up to go to the kitchen if, if I pull a brush through my hair it's a fancy day you know and especially right now like I'm I mean I only curled this part of my hair AJ's <laughs> got the other curl covered for the first time <laughs> you know <laughs> but yeah. I'm super comfortable mm-hmm. yeah anything else anything else that I'm missing from my chat I just love talking with her so much and um and by now, because we're going to air this in September after our TIFF party, mm-hmm. but she is the recipient of the TIFF party firecracker department blaze award, which mm-hmm. I am so jazzed about. It. I haven't even told her at this point. I haven't even told her about it yet. So I'm excited to share that news. Last year, it went to Jan Arden and it goes to somebody who's contributing to their community, but also like just killing it. 
Like she's got a book. She's got a podcast. She's got a TV show, a special. She's got twins. She's cute as hell. Like what? What? What more? She she swears a, like crazy. I was so happy about that. <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> oh my gosh, she's got. Yeah, I wonder if those kids are going to be swearing. And I bet if they do, she'll be like, "I don't care." Jeez, I want to hang out with them. Yes, please. When, right. When my mother realized that I wasn't going to stop swearing, she just decided to reframe and go, "You know, I read an article that said people with high intelligence swear." And I was like, "See, now you're on my side." <laughs> <laughs> so don't give up kids <laughs> wear them down <laughs> can you have my mommy that uh, article she hasn't done that yet yeah <laughs> speaking of being worn down what are you worn up to do oh that's maybe the worst segue i've ever that, done i want to talk about what you're with that what are you what, what are, are you working, working on what are you worn up doing work? but i want to know how to support you folks what are you working on aj what's on your plate these days Oh gosh. Um, I am working my way out of the fear of sending out an acting reel to get people to hire me for things. That's a, that's working up. Um, but yeah, other than that, just trying to stay creative and motivated and yeah, just keep living that artist's life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those demo reels will kill you. So good for you. That's a really, that's a big step. Emily, what about you? What's going on in your world? Just working on my healing website. Let's heal this shit. Dot com. <laughs> it couldn't be titled. A, it couldn't have a better title than that. Um, that's oh, just so perfect. I like yes. that a lot. Um, and also, you do a meditation for the Firecracker Department Wellness uh, folks. So you do that every the first Sunday of every month. So yep, check, that's right. First check out Sunday. her healing that's shit. Right. I love it. What about you, Alyssa? What's going on in your world? I'm just trying to get Emily Churchill's laugh on my ringtone. <laughs> right? You have to go through her agent for it. I've already tried. Okay, well. <laughs> what's that? Boss babe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, babe. Yeah. No, uh, my band is releasing our first full-length album at some point, and that may have happened by now. Who knows? Uh, we're working towards that. Might be a couple singles out. And other than that, uh, personally, just trying to do more orchestrating getting into film and nice other types of composing yeah but right classically trained musician yeah, who knew you could do something with that what yeah i'm excited to see where you go with that i think it's so Me i mean too. the daily fair is a beautiful band and let's keep keep watching it grow thank yeah. you appreciate it so um, if anybody needs well, something music up? super cheap yeah Daily Fair, the Daily Fair, go mm -hmm. F-A-R-E. Um, I'm, we're working on the TIFF party right now. So that's all, I, but this is going to come out after the TIFF party. So go check out those pictures because we had a lot of fun. I already see in the future. I know we had a lot of fun. <laughs> and other than that, I've got some scripts that I'm working on and trying to, as you said, AJ, just trying to stay focused in creative worlds. Um, I'll tell you what helps is our writing department every Thursday we have a writing session where we just write for two, three, four minute bursts. And it keeps me real inspired. I love seeing those folks. That's run by this guy woke up. Nadine and Avalon, and they're oh, doing a great job. So that's it. Don't forget to go and check out everything Firecrackery at firecrackerdepartment.com. Check out our Instagram and Twitter, Firecracker D-E-P-T. Let us know what you thought of this chat of other episodes. Maybe you'd like to be part of one of the after shows. You can reach out to us there too. Uh, there's always a seat for you at the firecracker department table. And we'd love to have you sit at the table. Just keep your elbows off the table. Do not make me ask you twice. My mom used to say uncooked meat off the table. But then what happens if you had sushi? How would that work? <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks so much. This has been the after show. Bye. Bye.